Hi everybody, I'm back with a short episode while I wait for the new memory chips to complete this project. You might remember that last time I needed still to replace one last chip that was working but was marginal, it was bringing down the impedance of the 5 volt rail. So that's the first thing uh, I'll start with today. That is the chip. It does work, it passes the logic test, it's an old Signetics um, N8T series, I think uh, these are bus drivers if I remember it correctly. Um, it's not a 74 series uh, part, it's more tricky to replace it, but I do have new old stock uh, of that Signetics part. Signetics used to be part of Philips Semiconductors, which is based where I live. Um, in the Eindhoven region in the Netherlands, um, so I happen to have <laughs> those parts. So um, I'll change it because the old one was marginal, it, 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 it was going to fail relatively uh, quickly. So there comes a new part in, I will lubricate the socket, I stri straightened uh, the pins uh, of the new part because it's a new old stock so the pins are still sort of splayed out. I had already cleaned that socket, but I'm doing it again just for, for good measure. And there goes the new part. Okay, so now we have the four uh, defective or, or marginal parts uh, uh, replaced. Now I'm testing the serial connection, it's the last important thing to test. And as you see, although I set the input to 1, which is, the computer should get input from my PC's keyboard via TerraTerm, it's not working. Type what I type, uh, it's not working. So I decided to go check things around uh, around the serial connector. And look at that, there is a zero ohm connection from the input pin to one side of the resistor and a zero ohm connection to the other side of the resistor. So it looks like the resistor has become a short circuit. But when I measure across the resistor, I get the correct 470 ohm. What is this? Is this some kind of uh, voodoo? <laughs> Um, if A is connected to B by 0 ohm and B is connected to C by 0 ohm, then A should be connected to C by 0 ohm, right? <laughs> Except that this is being measured in circuit. So look, if I swap the probes and I put the positive probe now uh, on uh, uh, um, the pins, first I'm measuring across the resistor, I get 470 like before. But now I'm going to go back to that pin and look over limit, <laughs> very high impedance. <laughs> I will come back to this later in the video. I just kept it, kept this in because I thought it was very illustrative of what we come across when we measure things in circuit and we think this is black magic. It's not, there's a very good explanation for this. And the clue is that when you invert the probes, you get a very different and reasonable result. Now I'm checking the serial channel and this should be the input pin from the keyboard, my PC keyboard when I type in, but I'm getting nothing on the input pin, which sort of explains the problem, I guess, I was getting nothing. Um, and then I will go to what should be um, the output pin and there I get the input signal. So the transmitter of the PC is going into the transmitter of the soul and the receiver of the SOL is going to the receiver of the PC. Uh, and this should be inverted. And the reason for this is that both the PC and the SOL are computers and not communication equipment like a modem. Uh, the modem would have it inverted. So I need something to invert the signals. But if you do a generic search on Google, you get all kinds of irrelevant things. So I decided to ask for Twitter's wisdom and a kind, a kind soul, Andrew Goodney, came to my, to my help and said, it's a null mode and adapter that you need, or a cable. So I, yeah, that, and now I knew what to look for, so I just got myself uh, a null modem cable with an FTDI chip, so it uh, converts serial DB25 straight to, to USB that goes to my USB hub. And now the signal should be swapped around as they should, things should work. Um, so let's look at what I get. If I go to the, what should be the input pin, pin three, I get that low RS-232 level and the signal coming in. So now it's finally working. But let's go back to that uh, voodoo, to that mystery. Look, there is another little resistor there of 270 ohm. But when I measure across it, I get 12 mega ohm. It's right next to the, to the level shifter uh, that drives the serial line. If I flip the probes now, 
I get zero ohm. <laughs> it's a short circuit one way and 12 mega ohm the other way. I measure the same thing from the resistor to the level shifter that the resistor is connected to. And it's the same thing, 12 mega ohm one, one way, zero ohm the other way. What's happening is that there is some diode inside that chip. So when you reverse the polarity of your probes, the multimeter always injects some voltage uh, um, to make the measurement. Uh, and that's opening a diode one way and not opening the diode in the other way because it's a reverse polarization. So to prove it to myself, I removed that analog chip uh, which is a level shifter and I'm going to make the same measurement on that resistor again <laughs> to show that it's just an, an in-circuit effect. There we go, 270 ohm, which is what we should, we should get. So it, this doesn't mean that the chip is defective, it's just that it's not a digital chip. So it doesn't have very high input impedance on every pin like a normal dig digital chip would have. This is an analog chip. So you're basically wiring that resistor into an analog circuit that you can't see. And it has diodes and resistors and all kinds of things. So without the chip in there, I get proper measurements. So I'll still make sure that that chip is working. Uh, I think it does, but uh, let's, let's see. That's the input from serial. It should be 12 volt peak to peak, and it is. And yeah, every division is two volts, so that's 12 volt peak to peak, that's RS-232 level, so that's okay. Let's look at the output, I should have the same signal, but now TTL level, five volts. And that's exactly what I get. So the chip is working fine, and that's just a, a sort of in-circuit effect that you get. I thought it was illustrative to show that to you. That's the control line, you see there is a little internal interference on in that line. This line should be always at uh, ground, zero volts. And that interference is internal to the chip because it looked exactly like the input signal. So that's, that's an interference inside the chip. It's no big deal, the chip is working fine, as you can see there. So now we can test it. We can test the serial connection. I'm turning on uh, the saw. I'm just going to inspect the contents um, of the memory block where I want to put uh, some code. So I'm doing a dump from C800 to C8FF in X. Everything is zero, so that memory is available. I only have one kilobyte of memory available right now. Now I'm redirecting the input. I'm setting I equals one, which redirects the input to the outside terminal, which in my case is my PC uh, running a terminal emulator. And now I'm going to upload code from my PC because I can access code from the internet <laughs> with my PC. And I just do a dump of that code in machine code and it's working as you see, I was celebrating that uh, now everything is working. And this is a very nice feature of the Sol. Um, the built-in keyboard of the Sol 20 communicates to the rest of the computer via serial protocol RS-232 at TTL level, but it's the same protocol RS-232. In other words, the built-in keyboard communicates to the rest of the system as if it were an external terminal. And what this does, it opens the opportunity for us to redirect the input, which is serial anyway, to a real external terminal. And that's what that set I equals one uh, does. Now it's one kilobyte of code because I don't have uh, the, the expansion cards uh, installed yet. So this is a very simple game, two little characters, very well designed, you can't see it's too far away, but very well designed. One of them moves randomly and the other one you control and you're supposed to chase the one that's moving randomly. And when you catch it, which is easier said than done, you get the little lightning character on the screen, which you will not be able to see either. It's a very simple game, but it proves that uh, Serial is working. This is the method I will uh, tell the museum to use when demonstrating the Sol. Just use a little laptop and uh, uh, connect it to Sol as if it were uh, a terminal via a terminal emulator and transfer it. I transferred it with baud rate of 600. It can go up to 9,600, but it becomes a little less stable. I think 2,400 is the ideal transfer rate. And for a machine like this, it's plenty fast. It's fast more than enough to load a few kilobytes um, of code. So I'm enjoying this game a little bit more, satisfied that uh, the, the work on the motherboard and the keyboard uh, is basically done. The, the, the last thing I needed to test because it's going to be used is the serial connection to upload code into the computer. Now I have proven to myself that uh, it is working and uh, so we can proceed. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, to, to deal with the expansion um, memory expansion cards today. 
um, next time I will deal with that. But for now, since the motherboard is okay, I can put back, um, reassemble um, the backplane card. I'm removing that wire because that, that was a modification. It's, it's not original, it didn't belong uh, in the machine. And since I have my hands out and the soldering iron is hot, I'm going to reflow the, the, the solder joints of the power connector. It's a nice opportunity to do it since the machine is open, disassembled, it's now or never, and after 40 years it's good to make sure that those solder joints are not dry and cracked. So reflowing them with new flux, new solder, is always a good idea. I'm cleaning it because I want to inspect those inspect those solder joints under magnification, make sure that they are okay, but before I do that I check for short circuits. Uh, even though visually I was quite sure there were no short circuits, you know, with a multimeter in continuity mode you can really be absolutely sure. So with a magnifier I inspect the solder joints and I tend to be obsessive compulsive uh, about this. Um, if I see it's like microscopic imperfection, I'll probably <laughs> reflow it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> sure enough, I do just that and check it again until I'm completely satisfied that um, this is up to standard. And um, now I need to clean it. I'm going to clean it with WD-40 contact cleaner. It doesn't have a lubricant. It evaporates quickly, but it has a strong um, spray which is part of the cleaning process, solvents and the flush action of a powerful spray. So I'm going uh, all out uh, on that one. I'll lubricate it later separately, probably lubricate the edge connectors of the expansion cards instead of the, of the slot itself. And now the, the reassembly, I need to put it back in and lubricate the connector. Now it has to come back in in such a way that it fits into the slot and the screw holes on the side. And that's easier said than done. So I'm going to cut that part. <laughs> it's aligned now after five minutes of struggle. And I'm putting the 12 screws back in. So the backplane connector is back in. And now I'm cleaning the, the power connector. The backplane connector has a different uh, power circuit. There is a separate harness that comes from the power supply and it has unregulated lines, uh, plus 15, minus 15, and 8 volts AC. So that's plus 15, minus 15, and that's the 8 volts AC. They all look good. There is a lot of ripple on the plus 15 and mi minus 15, but it's perfectly okay because um, every expansion card has onboard voltage regulators. So a bit of ripple is not a problem at all. And now I connected it and I'm, now I'm going to test with my multimeter the power rails on the expansion uh, card itself, on the, the backplane connector itself. And I get all the right voltages, plus minus tolerance, everything is fine. This is done. So this is it for today. I hope you've been enjoying. I will come back with the restoration of the memory expansion cards um, in a few days as soon as I get the chips. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.